Hi everyone, today we'll take a look at arithmetic series. So, an arithmetic series is the sum of n terms of an arithmetic sequence. So let's put this into some context here, right? In the previous video, we learned about arithmetic sequence, where we discussed the general term, right? Which was un is equal to u1 plus d into n minus 1, all right? So arithmetic series is the sum of the sequence, right? So when we have an arith arithmetic series, so an arithmetic series is just the sum of the sequences. So we will have the first term, the second term, the third term, all the way up to the nth term, right? This summation is called the arithmetic series. All right, so let's try and derive the formula which is in the data booklet, right? Now, if you want, you can skip this part and go to the part where, go to the next part where we, where we start solving questions. But if you want an intuitive feeling for how we get to the formula, you can uh, watch watch from this part. So what in the, in the previous slide, I just wrote that the summation, right? Let's denote with SN is the first term plus the second term, plus the third term, all the way up to the nth term, right? But instead of writing un, what I'll do is I'll write un as the form of the uh, as in the form of the formula of the nth term, right? Which was u1 plus d into n minus one, right? This was our un. Now, what I'll do is I'll, I'll write the same sequence again, but this time it'll be in descending order. And which, what I mean by descending order is that un will come first, which will be, it'll be u1 plus d into n minus 1. Then we'll have u1 plus d into n minus 2 because it's second last term. Then so on all the way up to u1, right? Now, what we do is we add column wise. So when we add column wise, we have this with this, the first term with the last term. Then we have the second term with the second last term, all the way up to, again, the last, sorry, all the way up to the last term with the first, last term with the first term, okay? So when we add column wise, what we're getting is that we're getting two times Sn, right? That's adding them. So we got two times Sn, and we're getting 2u1 plus d into n minus 1, right? That's what we're getting. And if we add this part, this uh, u2 and the, all, the, all the things underlined, underlined in green, we get the same thing again, right? We're getting the same thing again. And if we add the last term, right, last terms, we're getting the same thing again. So now what we have got is 2sn is equal to 2u1 plus d into n minus one, right? Now, if you take a look at this closely, this is actually added, these terms are actually added with each other n number of times. They're the same term and they're be being added n times, right? So let's condense this a little bit more. And what we get is n times 2u1 plus d into n minus one. Now, if I solve for sn, right? Then I'll divide both sides by two and I get n by two is equal to 2u1 plus d into n minus 1. And there we have it. This is the, uh, this is, if you look at the data booklet, this is the formula that's given, right? And there's one more formula given. Now let's go, let's go to that, right? Now the other formula is, it's just, you know, manipulation of this formula that's given here. So what we do in that formula is, if we break this up, right? If you'd write this as s of n is equal to n by 2 is equal to u1 plus u1, right? I did. I broke the 2u1 into u1 plus u1 plus d into n minus 1, right? I broke this up. So now, if I highlight this portion in light green right here, this is nothing but the nth term, right? This is the formula for the nth term, which we uh, used in the last video, right? So we can rewrite this formula again. And what we can write is that the sum of n terms is n by 2 into u1 plus un. And that's our second formula, which is in the data booklet, right? This is the second formula. 
And that's basically it. Like that, that's all there is to this. I mean, there's not, again, you don't even need to know how to derive it. This is just, so I did. So you guys get an intuitive feeling for what's actually happening and why, how we even got here in the first place before we actually start applying it. Because in the final exams, there won't, I, there are very low chances that there will be questions regarding you know, the derivation of this formula. There will be simple uh, applying this, applying, applying concepts, right? You just have to know the formula you know which uh which numbers to put in which one to use out of these two right here and that's it yeah th that's all the questions will ask you to do they won't ask you to do anything fancy or hardly ever you know the chances are very slim that they'll give something very you know something that's completely out of the box right so again you did, you really didn't not need to know this but if you if you're truly interested in you know math and you enjoy doing these things you know this was just for those people now I would just like to show one simple uh, one simple change to the formula. Suppose I take this formula that we have here in yellow and I slightly change this, right? Instead of keeping the two below the n, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep it here. U1 plus U n by two, right? Thing remains the same. In the end, it's all the same, it doesn't change. But I just did this just again to show you that basically to find the sum of n terms, what we're doing is we're finding the average of the first and the last term. Right, because we did u1 plus un divided by two. Right, we found the average, and then we just multiplied by the number of terms. So again, if you guys want an intuitive feeling, let's look at let's look at an example of this. Right, what we what we can do is we can take the sum of n terms to a hundred, for example. Right, so if we take the sum of n terms to a hundred, what we what do we get? So one, two, three, all the way up to. Uh, 97, 98, 99, and 100, right? Now, if we're actually summing them up, so what do we get? We get 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way up to 97 plus 98 plus 99 plus 100. Now, if you recall the formula that I wrote in orange right here, what we did was we found the first term, the last term, and then we divided it by 2, right? So we found the average of the first and the last term. So if you take the first term right here and the last term, what is this? This is a hundred, a hundred and a one, right? So basically the average of these two is nothing but hundred divided by two, right? And then we just multiply by the number of terms that was there, which was 100 terms. So now if we just simplify this down, what we get is uh, 5,050, right? So this is a quicker way to do it, right? This is just... You know, so you guys know how the formula is being applied. Okay, this was this is completely you know not necessary at all. I just wanted to show you you know how this formula is being used or how this formula you know how to apply this formula actually in a faster manner. Now, one more thing I want to point out is how which um, you might come across you know situations where you're not sure which formula to use, whether to use the one in the blue or the yellow, right? Because orange and yellow mean the same thing. There's really no difference. So I will I will not be including that when I compare the formulas. I'll only be talking about the one in the blue and the one in the yellow. So if you look in, if you look at the blue, right, it's, it consists of three different variables, right? We have n, which is the number of terms, u1, our first term, and the common difference, right? And but in the so one in the yellow, we have three terms, uh, three terms as well. We have the number of terms, the first term, and the nth term instead, right? So I would just like to make a point on the second slide right here. I'll do it in white. So uh, when to use, uh, let's say when to use which formula. Right. So if you know the number of terms, the first term and the common difference, right, then if, if the question gives you all this information, right, then you should opt for the first first formula. So if uh, u1, n, and common difference are given, then use formula in blue, right? Because it's a lot more simpler. It's because then you'll be wasting time trying to find the nth term and then using the formula in uh, yellow, which I've written here. But instead, if you have the inform if you have all the variables, if you have the value of the variables, it makes a lot more sense to use the formula in blue and just, uh, just you know, get the answer quickly. However, sometimes 
what will happen is, happen is you won't be given the common difference and you'll be given, you know, the first term of the sequence and the last term of the sequence, right? And so then that's when you use this formula right here, uh, S, S of n, right? The one in the yellow. So let's make a point of that. When first and last term are given, use formula in blue right honestly this i'm only make telling you guys this is so that you guys can speed up times like you guys can speed up right this is all for that purpose in the end whatever formula you use you will get the answer right and you can use both of the formulas to solve the question at times you you might need to you can use one formula and find the other one you know stuff like that but this is just so you guys, you know, use the minimum amount of time in these questions because these are, in my opinion, are time saver questions. You know, oftentimes our paper is of, I think, 110 marks and we get two hours. So basically our, our paper is worth one mark per minute, right? And these questions usually come around five to six marks. So if, if we're really quick with this part, we can solve this question within two minutes and save three minutes, which, which we can use for harder questions, maybe which uh, correspond with calculus or trigonometry. Right. That is the whole point of this. We want to be so, you know, fluent and so efficient in this chapter that we're saving, we're finishing the questions within half the within half the advice time. And so we can use the other time to for the harder questions, which there will be every time there will be some question in the paper, which is completely out of the box. And it'll happen that, you know, it, every year it's going to happen that, you know, okay, I, I, I missed this portion of the paper or I wasn't able to attempt that part of the paper. So we want to be prepared so, so well, so efficiently that at the end of the day, we can come out of the exam hall and say, no, I was able to attempt every single question. And I don't think I'll face and I'm, I didn't, I didn't, and I didn't face any difficulty in it. Right. That is the whole point of this portion. That is why I even mentioned this. Otherwise, there's absolutely no need. Right. You guys didn't even need to know this, but I just did it. So you guys are aware. So you guys think. Like before even starting monotonously, like a machine, you guys take a moment and think, okay, I have these two formulas with me. I know these two formulas. Now, which would be the most appropriate formula to use in this in this situation, right? Okay, so now let's look at sigma notation, right? Now, sigma notation, you may have seen it, you know, in your life. You might have even seen it if you have opened the textbook, right? But I just wanted to give you guys just an uh, introduction. I just wanted to tell you guys what, how the sigma function works, right? So how the sigma notation works, because there will be questions which are regard which correspond with sigma notation. So if you guys come across that, I don't want you guys to be confused. So sigma notation is basically the symbol which you must have seen. If you haven't, that's okay, not an issue. And we have some, you know, initialing variable here, and then we have some number here, and we have some function here. Okay, so let, let's let's talk through every single part of this. Okay, so I'll start with the f of x and I'll keep underlined in yellow, right? This part is the function, right? It tells us which formula we're using or which, you know, pattern we're following, right? Function, the pattern. Right? I'm using complete layman terms here just so you guys get a complete feel for it. The pattern we are following, right? Then we have the bottom part of the thing, so this part, right? So this is usually initialization, right? That's what I call it, initialization, right? So usually, you know, if, if we have a term in terms of x or in terms of n, it really doesn't matter. But suppose we have something like x is equal to 1, right? If, that, if we have like something like this, then what it means is the function will start with un is n is equal to one right usually you will have n instead of x it really doesn't matter it's the same thing um, I, I just prefer using x i find that more convenient but you can use n doesn't matter so we start with x is equal to one and we move all the way up to the final final number or the final term right this is the first term because it's x is equal to one and this will be suppose i say a uh, hundred right so this is the final term that we have that is all this whole formula means. Now, if you want to take a look at an example, uh, suppose if we have summation of, sorry, let me do that again. If we have summation of 2x 
plus 1, right? Uh, starting from x is equal to 1 all the way up to 100, right? So what, what we're doing is we're just, this, if we expand it, right, what we're getting is the first term. So if we replace x with 1, what do we get? We get 3, okay? Then if we replace x with 2, we're getting 5. And when we get those two different numbers, we add them up, right? Then we get 7, then 9, and we go, and we keep adding all the way up to uh, x equal to 100. So at 100, we get x is equal to, the whole thing is equal to 201. And basically that, that the summation of this is our answer, right? That, that's our answer. So the sigma notation is basically, you know, a way to condense a really, really long sequence, right? Addition of a long sequence. It really helps us as well. And you probably see this, you know, function in your calculator as well. It's present in your calculator. So it's it's a really nice way to, it's a really nice, fun, you know, process to use, especially in your paper too, when you have to, you know, add, add things up. And yeah. All right. Let's look at this question. The first term of an arithmetic series is 5, and the last term is minus 51. The series has 15 terms. Find the common difference and the sum of the series. All right, so let's let's condense, let's collect all the information that we have, right? So we have first term is 5. So let's write as u1 is equal to 5, and the last term is minus 51. So we don't know what term it is, so we'll just write as un as minus 51. The series has 15 terms. Okay, there we have it. So n is equal to 15. So we can rewrite this as u15 is equal to minus 51. And then they're asking us to find the common difference and the sum, right? That's what they're asking us. So this is a two-part question. First part is to find the common difference, and the second part is to find the sum of the series, right? So we have all the information with us. So all we have to do is just uh, before that, however, uh, I'll just show you what this question is actually saying. So we have 5 as the first term, and then we are adding some terms all the way up to minus 51, which is our last term. And they're basically asking Sn of this whole thing right here, right? That's what they're asking us. That's the second part of the question. So let's find the common difference first, right? So to solve the, to, sorry, to find the common difference, we'll have to use the general formula of an arithmetic sequence, which is Un is equal to U1 plus d into n minus 1, right? So we know that n is equal to 15, and u1 is equal to 5, and un, which is basically u15, is equal to minus 51. So let's go ahead and plug our numbers in. Again, formula-based question, right? There was literally no, you know, out-of-the-box thinking that we had to do. So let's get, what do we have here? We have minus 51 is equal to u1, which is 5, Plus common difference, we don't know because that's what we have to find. And 15, 15 minus 1, right? So now uh, we got minus 51 is equal to 5 plus 15. Uh, sorry, let me let me write this as 14, 14d, right? If we simplify this, we get d is equal to minus 4. So there we have it. We found the common difference. Now we have to find Sn, right? So there are two ways of using the SN, right? We could have, now that we have uh, the common difference, right? What we can do, uh, actually, we forget the common difference, right? We have two formulas. So SN is equal to uh, N by 2, 2U1 two plus D into N minus 1, right? That's the first formula, formula. And our second formula is U1 plus UN, right? Now, if I, you know, take a look at this, right, we have n, which is 15, we have u1 also, which is 5, we have the common difference, right, and obviously we have the n again as well. And the second question, we have sn is equal to, we have n, we have u1, and we also have un, because n is 15, right? So if we can use either of them, it really doesn't matter, right? However, suppose in this question, we never had to find the common difference, and we only had to find the sum. So then, the second formula would have been the better option, right? But now that we have even, now the question required us to find the common difference, we can use this formula as well and we'll get the same answer, right? It really doesn't matter. However, personally speaking, I you know, if you can use the second formula as much as you can because it's a smaller one, right? So you can do it faster and the chances of making a mistake are less, especially if it's a paper one. You want to see, you know, be as quick as possible. That is the whole key at the end of the day. 
obviously you know speed will come with practice but if you can you know start you know thinking about it from right now it'll be much easier as you approach the exam uh, in your second year so using the second formula we get sn is equal to 15 by 2 is equal to 5 plus minus 51 right so summation gives us minus 345 Right? This is the sum of the sequence, uh, whole sequence. Next question. So now we're given that find the value of this entire sequence right here. And it's with sigma notation. So now there are two ways of approaching this again. Right? We have to find the summation. So basically we have to find the sum of the series. Right? So let's, let's recall the two formulas that we have here. We have n by 2 is equal to 2u1 plus d into n minus 1, right? Or we have s of n is equal to n by 2, u1 plus un, right? Again, even in this question, you can do, you can do, you can use either formula, whichever you're more comfortable with. I prefer this one, but at the end of the day, it's your preference. And if you can do, and you can use any of the methods and get there quickly, it really doesn't matter. However, I'll just show you guys, you know, all the information that we need. So if we, you know, if we use this one, we would need n, right? So n would be 28 because it's going to the 28th term, right? And then we would need u1. So u1, all we have to do for u1 is just do plug in for r, we just have to put in 1, right? So uh, so we get 1. That's our first term, right? And then we need Common difference. Common difference, if you just look at this, it's 5, right? And yeah, that's all we needed, right? That's all we need. So we can just put this in the formula here and we can get the answer. But if you don't want to do that, what you can do is just find the nth term. So we can find, so our, again, n would be uh, 28. Our u1 is 1. And our un would be 5 times 28 minus uh, uh minus four which will be 136 right so now you know you have information for both of them it really doesn't matter at the end of the day so i mean if i if i personally i i prefer using this one so I, i'll just go ahead and do that you can do it the other way if you'd like it doesn't make a difference so if you put 28 by 2 is first term plus Last term, S of n is equal to 1,918. Right, that's our answer. Next question. The sum of an arithmetic series is given by S of n is equal to n times 2n minus 3. Find the common difference and the first three terms of the series. So let's look at all the information that's given here, right? The given, it's given that this. We're given this one, and then we have to find the common difference and the first three terms, right? So we're given this right here, right? Now, what does sum of n terms even mean, right? If we take a look, right? Sum of one term, right? Which is just the first term. Sum of two terms is sum of the first term and sum of the second term sum of the third term sum of the s of three is basically u1 plus u2 plus u3 right this is what uh this denotes right so now using this what we can do is we can find the first term second term and third term how would we do that well for starters s of one is equal to u1 so if we just put n is equal to one here we can basically find u1 right which would be 1 times 2 into 1 minus 3. So s of 1 is equal to u of 1, which is equal to minus 1. So we've already found our first term right here, right? We've already found our first term. Now, we can find our second term. How would we do that? Well, let's use this right here. So if we use that, s of 2 is equal to u1 plus u2, right? So first, let's find s of 2. So s of 2 would be 2 times 2 into 2 minus 3, which would give us 2 into 4 minus 3, which would give us 2. So that's the sum of two terms. Now we know that sum of two terms is basically u1 
plus YouTube. And we already have one, right? So S of two is two. This is minus one plus U2. So U2 gives us three. That's our, uh, well, that's our second term, right? Let's put this in white so it's visible. And now we have to find the third term and the common difference. Well, we can find the common difference quite easily, actually. All we have to do is use the formula for common difference, which is basically d is equal to u n plus 1 minus u n. So in this case, what we can do is u2 minus u1, right? Which would give us 3 minus minus 1, which would give us 4. So that's our common difference. Right? And now, to find the third term, all we, have to do, all we have to do is that we have to add the common difference uh, to the second term, right? So if we add the common difference, what do we get? We get u3 is equal to u2 plus the common difference. So u3 is equal to 3 plus 4. So our third term is 7, right? So basically, we have found all the requirements, right? We have found the first three terms, and we have found the common difference. Okay, next question. The sum of all two digit numbers, which when divided by four, yields unity as remainder. Okay, so let's look at this question. So it's saying that the sum of all two digit numbers, right, two digit. So what we mean by two digit is we have numbers from 10 to 99, right? This is our range of all the possible numbers that can be. Now, let's give, there's a condition also, right? The condition is, which when divided by 4, yields unity as a remainder, right? So unity right here is a fancy way of saying 1, right? You'll come across the term unity a lot in complex numbers. But, you know, even in complex numbers and even right now, unity means 1, right? That is all that it, it means. There's no other meaning of unity in in this step, in this portion right here so basically so any number when you divide by four will yield one as a remainder right those are the terms within this range that we need right that's the condition that's given to us so the first number after 10 which yields unity or one as a remainder is 13 right because when we do 13 divided by four we get four uh, because it's uh four and then we get one as the remainder so that's that satisfy the condition satisfies the condition right so so uh, if we, you know, if our 13 is our first term, right, then 17 will be our next term. 17 will be our next term, right, right here. And then we have 21, then 25, and so forth, right? And the last term, well, we know, we know for a fact that, we know for a fact that, we know for a fact that 100 is uh, divisible by 4 completely. So 99 would, would yield 3 as a remainder. 98 would yield 2 as a remainder. So 97 would yield 1 as a remainder. Right? So 97 would be our last term in this entire sequence. So basically, we have just derived our entire new arithmetic sequence right here, where 13 is our first term. 97 is our nth term, and um, our common difference, our common difference is 4. Our common difference is 4. Okay, so let's compile all the information that we have right here. We have u1 is equal to 13, d is equal to 4, un is equal to 97. Right. So now if we recall uh, the formulas that we have, right, we have S of n is equal to n by 2 times 2u1 plus d into n minus 1. Right. So in both cases, actually, even in the second formula, we're missing n terms. We need n to solve this entire question. Whether we have u1, un, or d does not matter. We need the number of terms. So to find n, we're going to use the formula that we have from our arithmetic sequence. Right. We'll use un is equal to 
u1 plus d into n minus 1, right? So our un is 97 is equal to u1, which is 13, plus common difference is 4, n minus 1, right? So if we simplify this a bit more, we get 84 is equal to 4 times n minus 1. So n minus 1 is equal to 21. So n is 22, right? That's what we have. Now, we can use any of the formulas. We can use any of the formulas, so it doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and use, uh, we can use S of n is equal to n by 2 times u1 plus un. I will prefer using this formula as much as possible just because it's a lot, lot more simpler, right? So we get S of n is equal to 22 by 2, 13 plus 97. And this gives us 11 times 110, which gives us 1,210. And that's our answer. Next question. The SN denotes the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence. If S of 2n is equal to S of 3 times S of n, then this condition is equal to what? Okay, so then we're given two conditions here, right? We're given S of 2n is equal to 3 times s of n. And they're asking to find us the ratio, right? They want the ratio of the sum of 3n terms to the sum of n terms. Right? So before, you know, we start working, this might be a little bit new for you when you see s of 2n or s of 3n because you have already seen s of n. So there's, you know, there's really nothing much different about this except all you have to do is wherever you see n in the, the normal formula, you just replace it with 2n. So what I mean is, in our normal for, normal formula, we have s of n is equal to n by 2 into 2u1 plus d into n minus 1, right? And also, I want to make sure you guys know this, that if you don't get confused in this question, and you might be wondering why I didn't use the other formula, because in the other formula, we need the nth term, right? We need the last term of the sequence, the nth term, which is last term or the nth term, right? Now, we don't know the last term here. Right, because it's s of 2 in terms, s of 3 in terms. So we will avoid using that formula, right? We will not use this, that formula. We'll use this formula right here because we have the n, we have the common difference, and the first term, right? Because the common first term will be the same for all of the sequences, whether it's s of 2n, s of 3n, or our normal s of n, right? So let's, now if we write down s of 2n, all we have to do is replace n with 2n. So we're left with 2n by 2 is equal to 2u1 plus d into 2n minus 1, right? Then we have s of 3n. Same thing again, same process follows here as well. Instead of n, we write 3n. And we get 2u1 plus d into 3n minus 1, right? So that this is what we have, right? And this is what we will use, okay? So let's, uh, on the next slide, Let's look at the first condition, which was, uh, which was, s of two n is equal to three times s of n, right? So s of two n was two n by two into two u one plus d into two n minus one, right? And then we have three times n by two. Uh, sorry, 2u1 plus d into n minus 1, right? This is what we have, right? All I did was I just expanded this uh, with, you know, with respect to what the condition was given, right? Right, and the same thing was written in the previous slide as well. So, if we expand... On this a bit more and if we simplify this we can get cancel n by 2 from both sides right then we're left with 2 times 2u1 plus 2nd minus d which is equal to 3 times 2u1 plus nd minus d right so then we get 4u1 plus 4nd minus 2d 
Then on the right hand side, we get 6u1 plus 3nd minus 3d. Right now, if I if we you know simplify this a bit more, we, I'll take the u1 on the right hand side and the rest of the terms on the left hand side. We're left with nd plus d is equal to 2u1. Right, that's that's what we have. We possibly can't simplify this any much more. I mean, all we can really do is we can factor out the common difference. So we get so we get d is equal to n plus 1 is equal to 2 u1 it doesn't really make much of a difference but yeah if you want to look nice now that's possible that's all we could do with the condition that was given to us right that is all we could have done so now let's start evaluating the you know the condition they want us to, or the ratio they want us to find right which was basically s of 3n so uh s of 3n upon s of n. So if we start, you know, simplifying this, right? If we, or sorry, expanding this and then simplifying it, what we get is 3n by 2 into 2u1 plus d into n minus 1 upon n by 2 to 2u1 plus d. Sorry, I forgot to add a certain thing here, which was 3n, right? n minus 1. So now if you, you know, uh, simplify this, we get 3 times 2u1 plus d into 3n minus 1 upon 2u1 plus d into n minus 1, right? That's what we're left with at the end of the day. That's what we have, right? Again, we're kind of stuck here. We really don't know what to do. But if you look at the previous slide, what we did was, we found a relationship. We found the relationship between u1 and d into n plus 1. And if we notice that we have similar conditions here as well, right? We have two u1s here. We have d and all that stuff right there. Now, what we can do is we can take this and, and substitute all for two u1. We can put in d into n plus 1. So let's go ahead and do that. I mean, we really don't have much of an option here, right? We're kind of we're kind of stuck at this point, so we have to you know try something out of the box. So if we do that, what we get is n plus one into d plus d into three n minus one, right? And similarly, we get n plus one into d plus d into n minus one, right? If I simplify this a bit more. What I get is 3 into n plus 1 plus 3n minus 1 upon n plus 1 plus n minus 1. What I did was I factored out the common difference from both sides because we have a common difference here in this term as well and a common difference here. So I took that out and I simplified it in, in that step as, as well. So you might be confused. So that's why I just wanted to explain that. And then if we simplify this a bit more, we get s of 3n upon s of n is equal to 3 times 4n upon 2n, and we get 6, right? So basically, that is our answer. I mean, as so, so now they wanted us to find the ratio, and we found it, basically. So we get, so what we got was s of 3n upon s of n is equal to 6. That is our answer. And this was a completely out of the box question, right? I mean, you could have just stopped at this point right here uh, in this, you know, thing box highlighted in orange. And you guys could have said, you know, what do we do forward now? Like we have nothing to work with, but you really had something to work with. Had you had, had we not evaluated this portion right here, we would have never found out here and it would have never, you know, sh you know, clicked at this point that, okay, let's replace this with what we have previously, right? And these are the type of questions which you can get an IB question. Like these are these are proper IB questions, okay? This is not from a past paper. I got, from, I got it from another resource. But you can expect something like this, right? You can expect some out-of-the-box thinking. And this is what makes a question hard, right? This is what increases the paper's difficulty. Not, not, not how lengthy it is that makes it difficult, but it's really these type of questions which really get you thinking, okay, okay, I need to start, you know, taking uh, i need to start you know make making relationships between certain variables that is that is what differentiates 
IB mathematics with uh, mathematics from your ninth or 10th grade, where you had to work with proper, you know, real numbers, where you had to find proper values. But here, we're basically, you know, using the formula, we're using the concepts that we learned from the formulas, and we're just trying to find different relationships and then manipulating them uh, into the conditions and then finding the answer, right? So at, at first, this, these type of questions will be really difficult, but I assure you that if you guys keep doing these type of questions from your past papers, or you'll find loads of questions like these from your past papers. If you look at them, if you look at the marking scheme and try to understand, try to you know, absorb as much as you can, you know, even if you do five questions in a day or five questions in a week, but if you, do, you, know, if you really absorb their methodology and their process and how they approach the question, I assure you, you know, it, these questions, you will finish them within like two or three minutes. In the final exam okay so we're given that the sum of the third term and eighth term is one so the third term plus the eighth term is one right and we're also given that the sum of the first seven terms is 35 so we're given s of 7 is 35 okay and what they're asking is, is to determine the first term and the common difference. To determine the first term and the common difference. So this is a question from 2019. And again, it wasn't a lot of, it, it, uh, there wasn't a lot of weightage to it. You know, it was just four marks. So again, you're expected to solve this question at least under in four minutes, if not even quicker. Okay, so let's get started. So we're given that, you know, this condition that we have right here. So let's evaluate this condition that we have, okay? So if you had to expand this, we would write this as u n u1 plus d into 3 minus 1, right? Because that's what u3 is. Similarly, u8 is u1 plus d into 8 minus 1 is equal to 1, right? All I did was I used the general formula for arithmetic sequence, and I wrote it as such. So now if we simplify this a bit more, what we get is 2u1 plus 3d minus d plus u1 plus 8d minus d is equal to 1. Simplifying this a bit more, we get 2u1 plus 9d is equal to 1. Okay, so this is the condition that we have here. Now let's look at the second condition because we really can't move forward with this part again anymore. So let's look at, you know, s of n, s of 7. So we can use, again, we can use it either of the two formulas, right? But it would be more appropriate to use the formula, uh, sorry. It would be more appropriate to use the formula S of 7, which is 35, is equal to N by 2 upon 2U1 plus D into N minus 1, this formula. Because we don't know the nth term, right? And we don't even know, uh, for that matter, I mean, we do know that there are seven terms. So we'd have to find, you know, the seventh term, then add them and all that. And then we'd have to find it, right? There's no, there's absolutely no need to do that when we can use this formula. This formula is much more appropriate for the situation than the other one. So using this formula, what we get is 35 is equal to uh, 7 by 2 into 2u1 plus d into 6, right? That's what we get. Now, if you simplify this a bit more, 5, so 10 is equal to 2u1 plus 6d. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. So we get, we, we got, we basically got a simultaneous here, right? We got a simultaneous equation with two variables. So now if this is a paper two question, you can use your calculator and find it. But if it's not, it hardly takes a minute to do it with hand also. So we get 2u1 plus 9d is equal to 1. And 2u1 plus 6d is equal to 10. So subtracting the set for second equation from the first, we get 0 plus 3d is equal to minus 9. So d is equal to minus 3. Okay, so that's our common difference. Now we just have to find the first term and we can just plug the common difference in, in the first equation in the above equation right there. So we get 2u1 plus 9 into minus 3 is equal to 1. So 2u1 minus 27 is equal to 1. 2u1 is equal to 28. So u1 is equal to 14. That's it. That's our answer. So we found the, we found the common difference 
and we found the first term. Next question. This question is from 2018. So the third term of an arithmetic sequence is 1407, and the tenth term is 1183. Find the first term and the common difference of the sequence, and calculate the number of positive terms in the sequence. So let's break this question. Let's find part A first, and then we'll worry about part B. So part A says find the first term and the common difference. Okay, so the question's given us the third term is 1407, 10th term is 1183. So we have U3 is equal to 1407. Let's evaluate this. So we get U1 plus D into 2 is equal to 1407. And we also have uh, U10. So we get U10 is equal to 1183. Again, evaluating this, we get U1 plus 9D is equal to 1183. So now this question, uh, if it's from paper two, it is from paper two, I think, 99%. We can just use our calculator and with the simultaneous uh, part of the calculator, find the, uh, find the answer and we get U1 is equal to 1471. And common difference is minus 32, right? That's the, that's the first part. Now the second part. The second part is asking, as for calculate the number of positive terms in the sequence, right? Number of positive terms. So they want basically n, the number of n's, or the value of n for which the sequence will remain positive, right? So if we write the general formula, which is u1 plus d into n minus 1, right? So un is greater than 0, right? They want un to be as greater as 0. Uh, for as long as possible, right, basically. So if we start evaluating this, we have U1, which is 1,471, plus the common difference, which is minus 32, and we have N minus 1, because N is the, what we have to find, the number of terms. So if we simplify this a bit more, we get minus, we get minus, so we get minus 32, into n minus 1 is greater than minus 147, right? Then we get n minus 1 is less than 1471 upon 32, right? Then we add n on both sides, and sorry, 1 on both sides. So we get 1471, 32 plus 1. So this portion here, is comes out to be basically 46.9 something 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 right right it's some decimal obviously we can't have 46.9 terms so we have to look for the greatest possible integer that's that satisfies this condition which is actually 46 so n is basically equal to n is equal to 46 so there are 46 positive terms in the sequence. That's it. The sum of integers from one to 100 that are divisible by two or five are what is what, okay? So they wanna find, the first, they want us to find obviously the number of, uh, the integers that are divisible by two or five, and then they want us to add them all up, right? That is what the question is asking us to do. Okay, so if we take all numbers divisible by two from two to 100, we, are, we have two, four, six, eight, 10, all the way up to 100, right? And if you took it, look at all the integers divisible by five, we have five, 10, 15, 20, all the way up to 100. These are the numbers that are 
divisible by both two or five, right? So now we want, uh, so basically we take the union of the set, right? However, if we take a look, right, what's going to happen is that there's, the, there's a common multiple of two or five, right? Which is 10. 10 is a common multiple of two and five, right? It's, the, it's, it's going to repeat in both 10, sorry, it's going to repeat in the sequence of two and five, both of them. So what we have to do is actually, we have to subtract all multiples of 10, right? We have to subtract all multiples of 10 because they are repeated. Right, because they're occurring twice. Because see, we have 10, then we'll have 20 as well because it's divisible by 2, and it's divisible by 5, then 30, 40, 50, all the way to up to 100. So, what we do, right, what our answer will actually come out is basically our answer will be the sum of all, all multiples of 2 plus the sum of all multiples of 5 minus the sum of multiples of 10 because the, they'll be repeated twice. So, that's why you have to remove them once. So, now let's find the sum of two terms, right? So we can, in, in this one, we'll use uh, n is n by 2, u1 plus u1, because we know the nth term as well. And we know n because it's uh, we can derive n. We have to find n in both cases. So n for uh, multiples of 2 will be 50 by 2. u1 is 2, and, and un is 100 in all cases. So that's, so if we simplify this a bit more, actually, we don't need to we'll evaluate all this at the end. So So then we get S of 5 is equal to 20 by 2 into 5 plus 100, right? And then we have S of 10, which is 10 by 2 into 10 plus 100, right? So basically, now all we have to do, we have to add them all up, right? So we get our answer is basically equal to 25 into 102 plus 10 into 105 plus 5 into 110. Sorry, not plus 5, minus 5. Remember, we're subtracting here. We're subtracting. So we get minus. So if we evaluate this, right, all we get is 3050. And that's our answer. So basically, the sum of all numbers divisible by 2 or 5 is 3,050, 3, between 1 to 100. Next question. The sum of n terms of an AP is given by S of n is equal to 3n plus 2n squared. Then the common difference of the AP is what? Now, before uh, we just start, you might, you, might, you might have seen this new term AP, right? AP stands for arithmetic progression. Right. Right. And it means the same thing as an arithmetic sequence. There's absolutely no difference. So they're interchangeable. They're synonymous. OK, so now let's look at the question. They're given that the sum follows this formula right here. So they're asking for the common difference of the progression. Right. So now if you recall our uh, concept of co a common difference, we know that it's the un plus 1 minus un, right? It's basically any two consecutive terms of a sequence, right? It's their, it's their difference. So, and we're given that the sum of n terms is 3n plus 2n squared, okay? So how can we find the common difference, right? The simplest way to find the common difference is to basically find the second term and the first term and subtract them, right? So basically our common difference can just be the second term minus the first term. And that's what we'll do, right? We'll look at, we'll go for the most simplest case possible, right? We don't need to complicate this uh, unnecessarily. Okay, so now to find the first term, in the previous question, uh, in a previous question, you, you might have remembered that the sum of first term is basically u1, right? And the sum of two terms is basically u1 plus u2. 
So similar, similarly, that's what we're going to do. We're going to find S of 1, which will also give us the first term. And then we'll plug it in for this, and we'll find the second term. Okay? So S of 1 is equal to U1, which is basically 3 times 1 plus 2 times 1 squared, which gives us 3 plus 2, which gives us 5. Okay? So that's our first term. That's our first term. Now let's find S of 2, right? S of 2 is 3 times 2 plus 2 into whole square. So we get 6 plus 8, which gives us 14. This is, remember that this is a sum of two terms, which means it's the sum of the first and the second term. It's not the second term. So now to find the second term, we have to do u2 is equal to s of 2 minus u1. So our second term will be 14 minus 5, which is equal to 9. Okay? That's what we have. Now, let's use this formula that we have right here. I'll, I'll do this in a different color. I'll do this in yellow. So let's use this right here. So our common difference will be 9 minus 5, which is equal to 4. All right, so that's our answer. Okay, if S of n denotes the sum of n terms of an arithmetic sequence, then all of this is equal to what? Right, so previously we saw a question regarding how the relationship between sum, uh, sum of n terms and the nth term itself, right? So let's reiterate that here once more. So what we got was if we have s of n minus s of n minus 1, right, basically get the nth term. Or if we have s of n plus 1 minus s of n, we're left with un plus 1, right? That's what we have. Or similarly, we have s of 2, like in the previous question, we saw s of 2 minus s of 1 gives us u2, right? That's what we got, right? In, the only difference was that s, uh, u1 and s1 were interchangeable. That's why I was using u1 the entire time and not s1. But still, we could have got the same thing, right? I mean, if you think about it, right? So if we have some random, you know, arbitrary series here, we have u1 plus u2 plus u3 all the way up to un minus 1 plus un, right? So this was this could basically be written as this could be base this could basically be written as all this in orange could be written as s of n minus 1 plus un, right? That's that's what we wrote this as. Right? And then if we take this to the left hand side, so we get s of n minus s of n minus 1 gives us u1 right that's that's what that's what's the, that's the statement that's written here okay so now let's use this concept and let's move forward with this question so we were given that all this is here and we have to find you know what value it equals okay so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to break this portion right here i will break this portion and then after break this portion so what I'm going to do is I will write this as s of n plus 3 minus s of n plus 2 minus 2 times s of n plus 2 plus 2 times s of n plus 1 plus s of n plus 1 minus s of n, right? This is a really, you know, it can be really intimidating, but let's, let's take a look at it part by part, okay? So first, let's look at this. We have s of n plus 3 is equal to n plus 2. Now, if you look at right, right, what, I, what I wrote right here, it's the same thing, right? So this turns out to be u n plus 3, right? Now, let's take a look at this part. This part, right? s of n plus 2, right? And then we have plus s of n plus 1, okay? So... If we take out, if we factor out the minus 2, right? So let, let me write it like this, minus 2 
s of n plus 2 minus s of n plus 1, right? This is what I wrote about this. So now this part is nothing but u, u2, un plus 2, right? This part is un plus 2. Let's look at this, look at, looking at this again, right? It's un plus 2. So what we get here is u n plus 2. And finally, we have this part here, which is, which is s of n plus 1 minus s of n, right? So where we get plus u n plus 1, right? That's what we got. So we simplified the entire expression to this. Right now, let's move forward. Let's let's break this portion down again on the next slide. So what we get is u n plus three minus two into u n plus two plus u n plus one. Right. If we break this down, what do we get? We get u n plus three minus u n plus two minus u n plus two plus u n plus one. Right. Let's look at this part closely. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Let's look. Let's look at this part closely. Right. So we have two consecutive terms of a common uh, of a se common sequence. Right. Common sequence. So, if you recall, what does the difference of two common terms in a se sorry two consecutive terms in a sequence mean? Right. It's the common difference. Right. If we had u one, u two sorry, u3, right? If we, if we do u3 minus u2 or u2 minus uh, u1, we get the common difference, right? We're getting the common difference at the same time. Similarly, this is the common difference. This is what we're getting here. That's what this whole part means. Now, let's look at this part here. Let's look at this. If we take out the minus sign, we get un plus 2 minus un plus 1, okay? It's a very similar thing, right? Two consecutive terms of a sequence. Again, this is also equal to the common difference. So now, if we take a look at this, what we're getting is just the common difference minus the common difference, which is equal to 0. So our answer is 0, right? So going back to the question, there's an, the entire answer to this, right? The numerical value or the numerical answer to this is zero, right? That's what it means. And this question is, I, in my opinion, one of the best questions that I've ever seen, right? Because it really makes you think about the concept of how an arithmetic series is derived, right? It's not a very, it's not a, it, it's not a formula-based question at all, right? It really makes you think about, okay, if I have consecutive terms, if I'm taking the difference of two consecutive, if I'm taking the difference of difference of series right here like this, right? Then I'll get the nth term, right? And then if I, if I, you know, if I, you know, manipulate things around, what do, I, what am I getting? So it really, really, you know, it's a, it's an out of the box question, and you know, you can expect something like this in the exam if you know something something odd comes out, you can expect something like this as well. So if you did not get this question in one try, it's okay, right? Watch this part of the video again. And like, you know, you might need to watch it a couple more times until, you know, it actually hits you. Oh, okay. So this, this S of N plus three minus S of N plus two is actually U N plus three. And U N plus three minus U N plus two is actually the common difference. And then, you know, it's the whole answer comes out to be zero. It's, 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 if it's, if you're doing this for the first time, it will be a little difficult, but it's okay. You know, you just have to be consistent with how you go around it. Okay. So this was all for this uh, portion. This was all there is for arithmetic series. In the next video, we will look at properties of arithmetic sequences and series, right? I didn't go over the specific properties in this video or the previous video. So I thought of making a separate video for that where we look at, you know, specific properties of sequences and series. Because oftentimes, examiners will ask you questions related to those properties. And if you know those properties really quickly, it's really, really easy to work forward and solve the question within minutes, right? Otherwise, it could take you six, seven, even 10 minutes, where if you know those properties, it'll take you within two to three minutes to solve a six mark or a five mark question. So that, was all, that is all for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.